Today I've got a nice integral which uses a lot of techniques that would serve as a good review for an integral calculus course. In fact, I think an integral like this would be reasonable on a final exam in such a course. Maybe like one of the harder questions or the hardest question on the final though. Okay, so let's see what we have. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 9 over the square root of 1 minus x to the 4th. So the first thing that we'd like to notice is that this is an improper integral. If we let x tend towards 1, we get a 0 in the denominator. So technically, we need to set this up as a limit. So this is often glossed over, but if you really want to like tie up all the loose ends, you need to do this. Okay, so this is going to be the limit as b goes to 1 from below of the integral from 0 up to b of, now we have x to the 9 over the square root of 1 minus x to the 4 dx. So it's the limit as b goes to 1 from below because we're on the interval from 0 to 1, and that includes numbers smaller than 1. Okay, now we're ready to start our substitutions. So maybe the first thing to notice is that this x to the fourth is really like x squared squared, and that motivates us to make a substitution maybe t equals x squared. So notice that's equivalent to saying that t squared equals x to the fourth. So that means we'll have a 1 minus t squared inside of this radical in the denominator, but that'll be super helpful for a trigonometric substitution which is coming down the line. Okay. So now let's also notice that dt is equal to 2x dx. And then let's also notice if t squared is x to the fourth, then t to the fourth is x to the eighth. And so that's helpful, helpful because x to the eighth times x is equal to x to the nine. So we can use this dt and this t to the fourth to kind of gobble up what's happening in the numerator. Okay, so let's maybe do a little sub box of this and then we'll start doing our substitution. So notice we've got a 2x dx there, but we only have like a x dx here after factoring out the x to the eighth. So we can make up for that by bringing a half out. So let's do that. We can actually bring a half out of the limit as well because it's a constant. So we have a one half and then the limit as b goes to one from below and then the integral from zero to b of, let's see, let's write this as x to the eighth times 2x dx all over 1 minus x squared squared. Okay, great. So we're being really transparent with all of the steps here. And now we can make these substitutions. So this thing that I'm boxing in yellow is my dt term. This thing that I'm boxing here in purple is t. And then this thing right here that I'm boxing in blue, x to the eighth, is equal to t to the four. Great. Now let's notice when, let's see, x is equal to zero, then t is also equal to zero. When x is equal to b, t is equal to the square root of b. But since we're taking the limit as b goes to one, we actually don't need to replace that with the square root. Okay, so let's see, this leaves us with one half, and then we have the limit as b goes to one from below, the integral from zero to b. Really the square root of b, but again, because of a change of variables in the limit, we don't really need to worry about that. And then here we'll have t to the fourth dt over the square root of one minus t squared. And now from here, we notice that we're set up to do a trigonometric substitution. Whenever we have something of the form square root of one minus variable squared, the standard substitution is to set that variable equal to the sine of theta. So let's do that. T is equal to the sine of theta. That makes dt equal to the cosine of theta d theta by taking the derivative and it makes the square root of one minus t squared also equal to the cosine of theta using the Pythagorean trig identity. And now we need to talk about the bounds of integration. 
So if t is equal to zero, that implies that theta is equal to zero. Just by the fact that sine of theta is uh, sine of zero is zero, I should say, then as t approaches one, that means theta approaches pi over two. Again, because sine of pi over two is equal to one. Okay, so that allows us to rewrite this as one half, and then we have the limit as, let's say, we can rename this to maybe a goes to pi over two from below, and then the integral from zero up to a of, we have sine to the fourth theta times cosine of theta d theta over cosine of theta. So the cosine in the numerator comes from this differential t component, and in the denominator comes from this trigonometric identity. Okay, so we can do a simplification here, and then we can next think about this sine to the fourth as sine squared theta squared, and then apply a power reducing formula. So let's do that. So this is gonna be one half. And then actually, because of this trick with the cancellation here, we no longer have an improper integral, and I can just plug this pi over two into the value here. So let's do that. We have one half and then the integral from zero to pi over two of, let's see, sine squared can be reduced to one half, one minus cosine two theta. So we have got one half, one minus cosine two theta, and then all of that is squared. And that's because this stuff in here is our substitution for sine squared. That's, like I said, the power reducing formula, which is maybe the other side of the double angle formula. Okay, so that's looking good. We can square this half, bring it out. That gives us an eighth. And so we have one eighth. And then we have the integral from zero to pi over two. Multiplying this out will give us something like one minus two times cosine of two theta, and then plus cosine squared of two theta, and then all of this is d theta. Okay, great. But now we can do some tricks. So notice if we were to integrate cosine two theta, we'd, we would get something of the form sine two theta. Evaluating that at pi over two and zero gives us zero. So that means this integral will give us zero or the integral of that function gives us zero. And then furthermore, we can take this cosine squared and apply the power reducing formula again, but it's a slightly different power reducing formula. This is one half one plus cosine, now it's four theta, because we have to double that angle there. Okay, so let's see what that's gonna leave us with. We have one eighth, and then we'll have the integral from zero to pi over two of the number one, and then plus the number one half, and then plus the cosine of four theta, and then d theta. Now we're pretty much home free. If we integrate cosine four theta, let's maybe do that in the margin. That gives us something like one quarter sine four theta evaluated from zero to pi over two. Sine of zero is zero and sine of two pi is zero. So that gives us zero regardless. So this part goes off to zero and we're left with three halves times one eighth, that's something like three sixteenths evaluated at pi over two. So in the end, we get three pi over 32. And if you've liked this video, I've got a lot of other videos where we do nice integrals on the channel. So maybe check the one out that's on the screen right now. And that's a good place to stop.